Thunder. Got it. With eight tenths left. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into another episode of The Fundamentals. As always, I'm your host, EK, here with the legend. How you doing, Mr. A? EK in the building. Hey, yes, we get, we're getting a little rhythm, man. We're getting a little rhythm. Oh, yeah, rhythm and flow. Rhythm and flow. <laughs> I'm feeling it out. Like, I'm getting comfortable. It's, it's fun. I love this. I love this. Yeah. And continuing our series of fizzle and the fizzle breakdown, today is a very, very special letter and a very special word in dealing with sacrifice. And as always, we like to start off the show. Mr. Day, how would you define the word sacrifice? Man, well, sacrifice, it's, it's interesting that it's right in the middle of fizzle. It's like the right. It's always like the where the rubber meets the road when you're, you know, when you're thinking about where you want to go, it always comes down to what are you willing to do? Um, and I think, I think it was one of the, I think coach Nick Saban or someone I, I refer to some of these coaches a lot in terms of, it's not about what you want. It's about what you're willing to do to get what you want. And it comes in so many different layers, man. You know, it's really, I feel like it's really like a self denial. It's a denial of, of self, of, this whole idea of self and what does that mean? Um, we, you know, we're born to focus on ourselves so much. We become self-centered, self-satisfied. The world tells us it's all about us. And it's just not natural uh, to think about somebody else or giving up to gain. So I think it's really about, you know, what are you giving to gain? Yeah, absolutely. And, like you talked about, the self is so powerful because, you know, we tend to focus a lot on ourselves and the things we need to do. And sacrifice, you know, is a big part of that. And ultimately, you know, we talked about it before, you know, off camera, but sacrifice really comes down to me truly to discipline, you mm. know, discipline. And another word we can, you know, discuss a little bit later, too, is comfortability, like mm. in the sense of how comfortable you are getting to certain levels and removing certain things that you're in now. So sacrifice is a really deep and powerful word if you really think about it. Yeah, I mean, if you if you think about any team that you've ever been on, any team that's ever won anything, uh, it's, it really comes down to that sacrifice. Like, are you willing to, like, are you willing to sacrifice minutes? Are you willing to sacrifice shots? Are you, you willing to um, just get outside of yourself? And I think a lot of people know that that's, something that's really important, but how willing are you to do that? Mm. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Because again, it's, it's the determination to it, how willing you are. You know, it's a lot of sacrifices that you have to make from not just a personal perspective. I love how you brought in the team aspect of it because you, you know, played at the highest level on multiple teams um, and there's sacrifices there, there's sacrifices within your family. Um, and it's a lot of different levels of sacrifice that, you know, we can, you know, deep dive and talk about as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was thinking about the watching the NCAA tournament and watching, you know, the, the road to the Final Four. And my man Clark Kellogg, Clark, Ke my man Clark Kellogg made a, a really interesting point and commentary and how Duke is losing themselves for something bigger, right? It's like, yeah, they're playing for a championship and all that, but them knowing that this is Coach K's like last hurrah. Um, they don't, they, they, they're doing it, not just for themselves, they're doing it for each other, but they're also doing it for him. And I think sacrifice is really about looking, looking within and finding what's that something bigger that you can live for, that you can play for, um, and just, and just breathe for, um, you know, I think the more you can reflect and think higher and think about, man, what is it? What's the bigger thing that I'm, I'm doing? Cause you, you be, you've been on teams where the, the guys you playing with may not be your favorite people. You know what I mean? They, 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 um, you know, they might, they may not be the person you're going to hang out with all the time. Um, I think teams that are really close end up giving themselves a better chance because they have this connection. But I, I think about this a lot, right? People talk about chemistry. Mm. I believe in sports, like chemistry is kind of, overrated as a term because when I'm stepping on the court, you know, you have to develop this mindset that I have to make this team and this thing flow good for everybody. 
So it's really about how can I give up something of myself to make it flow right? Because if it flows right, and it's that, that there's power in that. Like if all five five of us, if it's in basketball, or all you know, eleven is in in football. If I'm giving myself for the total wellness and flow of the team, then we're all it's like a current, and that power just keeps moving forward. But I'm if I'm stuck in my own space, then that can only be that powerful. It, Coach K does it a lot. He talks about you know this illustration of the five fingers versus the fist, right? You know the five fingers come you know standing outside to you know separate it is not as nearly as strong as you put the fist together. So I think sacrifice is about how do you get out of your own space, uh, how do you, your own head and your own sp- spirit, and how does how can I um, merge that energy into the the people around me and make it better. Yeah. And I love that analogy you use from Coach K about the the fist and the fingers, because, again, you know, but a fist, if you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <I> don't know. <laughs> you, <can't. laughs> but, you know, like with a fist, um, if you hit you, somebody. You, went, you all you went to the Rick James, you went to the five finger. <laughs> I already know where you went. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> Man, but, if but you, you know, we somebody- should actually look. The crazy thing is, it it is a topic, right? So if yeah. you think about, you know, sacrifice, not just being giving something, right? Yielding mm-hmm. to something that's outside of your own like power and strength. It's 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 subscribing to that. It's buying into that, and a lot of times it's giving up your own flesh, like your own wants, like your own intuition, your own um, natural instinct, which sometimes is to respond, which sometimes is to some clap back or whatever people say, right? So if you people are all now they're talking about the whole, you know, Will Smith, Chris Rock thing, right? And it's like self-control is one of the dimensions that we talk a lot about with discipline. How hard is it to think about what's the best thing to do in this moment? You, it's hard to really think about because you don't have time. You don't have time to think. You go right off of emotion, right? And obviously, everybody was like, "Man, that would I would have done this. I would have done that." Well, sacrifice is really about putting yourself in a position where you're controlling that and thinking about. It's easy to say, "Man, he shouldn't have done this or shouldn't have done that." But let's talk about, let's not talk about what he should have done or shouldn't have done. Let's talk about the principle, the fundamental, right, of sacrifice, which is self-control. We, like, we got to learn to do that if we, if, if we want to win in life. Yeah. No, I agree. Because, again, self-control and discipline are kind of go, they go hand in hand with sacrifice. Because literally, the more self-control that you have, and a key word we use a lot is awareness, mm-hmm. you know, constantly being aware of. The moment, because literally your life is a moment by moment thing. Yeah. You know, the longer moments, the shorter moments, the midterm moments, whatever it is. But when you are fully in control of certain things, you have the discipline to know like, hey, I got to give this up for the greater good. Like you were mentioning, yeah. the rewards are 10 times better. You know, mm. man, you had a good one. What's the reward? Like, that's the thing, too. When you're thinking about sacrifice, you got to think about what is the reward that you're actually looking for? Because that's what we're yeah. talking about. Fundamentals and winning are about that end goal, that higher aspiration. And if you're not living into that high aspiration, then you're just kind of floating. You're just in a river, just kind of like going with the current. So, you know, thinking about the, your reward is extremely important. Like I, I, was, I was looking at this and I wrote this. It's like, here's a question. What's the bigger thing you're willing to lose yourself for? What's the bigger thing you're willing to lose yourself for? Not not gain. See, the world will tell us we have to gain ourselves, mm-hmm. build ourselves up, elevate. You know, you know what I mean. Um, level up, right? But the Bible also tells us to die is to gain, right? You have to. So denying yourself is a key part of sacrifice and denying yourself 
doesn't mean depri- deprivation of your self-worth, right? So it doesn't mean we're depriving ourselves of, of our worth. It's just that we're giving something of value to gain something of more value. Yeah, no, for real. And, you know, when you were talking, it reminded me of, a, I cannot pinpoint the exact verse. I know it's a Mark 14 that's kind of spread out, but there's, in the Bible talked about my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. And that's a huge sacrificial point there because sometimes in life, our mindsets, we always talk about it too. We're always determined. We, we know where we want to be, but the earthly part of it is so hard to make these sacrifices. Like you said, to lose yourself, to go, go for the greater good. It's so hard to do that. Even like, again, in your mind, you're ready. You're willing to. You want to do it, but you have to understand that there are two sides of it. There's the mental perspective we've always talked about and the physical perspective as well. Mm-hmm. So once you find that good balance of both, you're dangerous human being. You're dangerous. Wow. So say that again when it says the f- the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. weak. The spirit. So if the spirit is willing, and the flesh is weak. That means that again, you're dying to the flesh. So we're dying to the flesh, which means the flesh means self. It's a need for my own self-satisfaction, self-fulfillment, right? And dying to self, it's really, deci- it's really dying to the, to the destructive nature and forces of ourself. You know, it's like I need to be, you know, self-satisfied, you know, becoming self-centered or self-satisfied. That's really what, I, what our nature is. It's becoming overly like self-conscious. So we become overly self-conscious, self-satisfied. Then we start to, you know, get lost in our in our flesh. But if we die to that. Right. And we say it's not about me. It's not about my 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 desires. It's really about, you know, what's better in the long term. And that but that takes that takes a lot of. Like thought, it takes a lot of, like you said, spiritual willingness. Right. To get to that point. Yeah. And of course, one of the greatest things in life is experience. You know, if you take the experiences that you go through and allow yourself to develop and understand them, you know, that that helps in the long world with sacrifices as well, too, because, again, there's so many different things that happen to us day by day. And you told me this, you know, a couple of times, but sacrificing really comes down to what are you willing to do daily? Mm. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a discipline. Like you said, it's discipline. That's your word. Discipline. Yeah. And discipline yeah, is something that it never just, it, it never just stays. Discipline is something that you have to continually, continuously fuel. Now you can, you can put yourself in a mindset where I'm doing something consistently and, and, and but it never just, you can never, it never it's, it's, it can go dormant if you don't if you don't let it if you let it right uh, discipline is something you have to continuously push practice um, but you know you had a question uh, that was a good one in, about um, how can you can you have success with, without sacrifice can you have success without sacrifice and I, I would say true success. No, because, you know, you can you can do something like, you know, people have, you know, one big game or, um, you know, a a big a big hit, you know, one thing. But that's not true success. True success is longevity. It's it's doing something over and over and over again at a high level. And I think in a higher perspective of success, it's really. um What's your assignment? What is your divine assignment? What are you called to do? And anytime you get a calling, then it usually means that there's something that you have to do that's very uncomfortable, out of the box, um, and takes a lot of sacrifice. Yeah, and I'm I'm actually glad you said the word comfortable because I feel like even, let's say you have found a certain level of success, you know, And I think you can really answer this because of your NBA career and the success that you've had at different levels. But 
do you feel like people get too comfortable inside of certain levels of success? Because I know that you said that that success really comes down to the longevity. Can you do this for a long time? But is there a point where somebody can be inside of success and get too comfortable? Yeah, I think people can get a little comfortable. Um, you know, you you work really hard. Um, you dr- you driven to get to a certain point. Um, but but I think when people do that, when people have success and they get comfortable, it means they're defining success the wrong way. So that means you're you're more externally driven. You're driven by something material. You're, you're driven by something that, you know, you you probably can touch and feel tangible. It's material, right? If you're driven by something bigger than that, deeper than that, you know, just uh, you're driven by you're, you're driven by a purpose, uh, or just you know the motivation of a family member, or something bigger than that, then you really won't be as satisfied with success because success will, won't be, oh, I got the money now. You know, success won't be, I got on the cover of this magazine now or, or whatever. Success won't be that, right? It'll be much bigger than that, how I'm touching people, how I'm impacting people. Because that's something that that you just never stop feeling. You know, you, you just never, you know, I, I feel at, at my stage, Success is different than now winning a championship. You know, success is make is really making an impact. Success is um, how can I, you know, impact my family first, my kids. You know, how can I, you know, when the Bible says, um, when Jesus said, "Ask to ask to be glorified by the Father," right? He said, "Glorify me, so I can glorify you." He went on the cross. Right. Not for himself. He went on a cross because the father gave him an an assignment. To make eternal life real for anyone who who desires it and is called to it. And so. His sacrifice led to something so much bigger. It was for everybody to experience eternal life. That was that was the sacrifice. So it wasn't for him. It was so that what the father put in place, he could say worked. Right. And I think that when you think, when I think about sacrifice, it's what, what can I do or give up or think bigger than me that will last not just here, but even when I'm gone, And people could be impacted by it even when I'm gone. And that sacrifice means you have to be consistent with certain things. I got to give up. I have to give up a lot of things just so I can say, no, I haven't, I haven't spent time with my son. Yeah. I've been home, (laughs) you know, or, or I can't do this. I can't, you know, and your appetite, your appetite, I think changes with sacrifice and with discipline, right? Just think about your physical appetite. If you discipline yourself for a certain amount of time, then, okay, things that had all that sugar in it, man, it, 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 it's, it starts to taste a little different. I mean, it's sugary, but you don't crave it and desire it and you, you know, have the, the strong appetite for it if you just discipline your, your body to do it. Yeah. And I think that, you know, there's another layer of sacrifices from what everything that you were saying, when it comes down to it, it sounds like it's kind of passion versus purpose, in the sense of like you were talking about define, uh, your defined assignment. And so you can be very passionate about preaching. You can be very passionate about playing basketball. You can be very passionate about lifting and losing weight. But your purpose, like you said, is your impact. Mm-hmm. And that kind of ties in the legacy. You know, that's no time for another yeah. thing. But at the same time, you know. When you're when you're living inside of your purpose and you understand that, like you said, it's about impact. It's about what am I doing that's for the greater good? Am I helping people? Am I leading mm-hmm. people? Am I that's what the purpose part of it is. So it's kind of like another layer, yeah. like I said, with passion versus purpose inside of sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, you can be passionate within your purpose, right? Mm-hmm. But that's where what you said, that's that kind of like touches on what you said. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
if your passion is not in line with your purpose, then that's where the, that's where it becomes weak. It become it'll die out, right? It won't be as powerful and last. But if your passion is in line with your purpose, then that is powerful. I mean, I'm, we may even make a shirt with that, man. That's, that might be a. <laughs> But 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 you but you hit on it though because how do you know your passion is in line with your purpose you know and I think that's that's one of the things that I think my, you know faith going back to faith it gives us it you just you just know deep down like if you have this this peace that I'm that I'm doing something right that it's 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 um it's a lifestyle like pattern that that's fitting and that's sitting right in my spirit and my soul. And because most likely it's for something bigger than me. Yeah. yeah. And that's the ultimate point. You know, you was sacrificing so many of the things we've mentioned. It's just, it has to be bigger than you. There has to be something much greater that drives you and drives your everything that you want to do within sacrifice. Yeah. And let me just ask you just again, because of the things you've been through and, you know, your career related to that. Take me back. And I want to kind of go through kind of like a ladder. Mm. Take me back to when you were in high school. Yeah. And I kind of want to speak to the youth on this. But what were some of the sacrifices that you had to make early, especially knowing that there was a chance for you at that point to go to the NBA, to go to college and play at a high level? What were some of those early sacrifices that the teenage Al had to make? You yeah. Know? I mean, of course, we didn't have all the social media. We didn't have a lot of the things. Um, so I would say one of the biggest sacrifices you have to make is is kind of relationships. Like what relationships are are beneficial to you? You know, whether it's somebody you're hanging with, somebody. I mean, the hard part is, you know, is it somebody you're really close to? Um, this your time. You know, there are times when I see I never. I never felt like it was sacrifice to go work on my game or go find the best talent to play against, to find the best training. Um, I just love to play. I love to work. Um, and I don't know if that's something that I was just kind of born with uh, or if it's something that, you know, it was just part of our home. Like we, my, my parents and my sisters, they we all kind of feel like we're hard workers. So part, I think it may, may have been both. Uh, but I was just driven to just, you know, be as good as I could be and never liked, <laughs> I never not liked being good at something. You know what I mean? So for me, sacrifice, I never looked at it that way. Um, and I I didn't mind the work, like the the process of working and getting better. Never really, never really bothered me. You know, I think I didn't, that never was an issue. I think for me, uh, I was more probably, probably certain relationships, you know, the way you spend certain time, um, you know, you know, eating wasn't a big thing for me. You know, I was real skinny, so I, I had to eat, <laughs> eat more. Um, I do remember speaking of, you know, sacrifice. Um, here's probably my story that I remember the most as it relates to sacrifice when I was a junior. Um, Going in our junior year, we had just, so our sophomore year, we had just lost in the state championship. So we were really, really driven to come back and nothing less than winning it with my, my, my junior year would have, would have probably satisfied us. So we had a pretty intense conditioning program um, and it built up over six weeks. So the last week, literally, I, the last two weeks, I started feeling these, these pounding headaches. And I was like, it was weird. You know, my stomach was hurting. I was getting pounding headaches. And, you know, I was growing fast. So I had to take some anti-inflammatories. And what I found out later is those anti-inflammatories were really like was kind of eating at my, at my stomach. And I was getting these stomach pains. And I didn't realize that I was actually losing blood. Um, and during our last week in conditioning, I mean, I was getting dizzy while I was running and I had headaches. And our last day, you had to make this certain time. And I ran across the, the baseline, ran into the hall, into the lobby of our gym. And that's all I remember. I passed out. Next thing you know, I'm in the hospital 
I lost a pint of blood and my uncle had literally given me a pint of blood. And, you know, they were like, man, Alan, you, you literally like were in danger of, of your life, you know, going through this whole, but in my mind, I didn't know all this. I was just, I had one goal, right? I'm just, you know, I was highly, being highly recruited. I knew that my position on the team, like I wasn't going to be the one that, that didn't make the conditioning. And so I didn't think about all that, but I look back on it and you put yourself through things because uh, you just, you don't leave yourself an option. And you don't, again, I don't look at that as sacrifice, but you look back and um, I would go home and man, my head would be throbbing, my stomach would be hurting. And I, but I didn't think anything of it like that, that just, man, you know, um, I'm going to, I got to get to this goal, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. obviously now I, I can appreciate, we did end up winning, winning the state that year. And um, I think that, when I think about sacrifice or commitment or discipline, um, as I'm thinking about this and talking about it, you, you don't really even look at, I don't think you really look at it that way. Right. Because you're just, you're just that driven. You just want it that bad. So, you know, I don't really looked at it as, you even look at it as, as like really giving a lot up. I just, you know, you just, you just want something. And, I think the idea is if you want something bad enough, uh, you figure, you just, you figure it out. I think um, what we need though is we need people to, you know, really help us and expose us and push us and coach us um, and let us know what's possible so that we can have that vision and drive. Yeah. Agreed a hundred percent. And I think that, you know, the number one word that I could take from kind of that, youth version of you was mm. ambition because especially when we're young, that ambition is what really drives you more than anything versus sacrifices or anything like that. Because when you got <laughs> right. a dream that's so powerful, an idea that's so powerful, like you were saying, you were literally essentially really risking your life because you had such a dream and a goal, not only win the state championship, but the longevity to get, you know, further and, you know, get yeah. to college at this point. And so when you got to mm. college, what were what was the mindset then kind of from, you know, sacrifice standpoint or ambition when you start becoming more of a young adult? I think when you're in college, it's really like how, how are you making decisions? For me, it's like, are you making good decisions not to put yourself in compromising positions? You know, um, you know, going back to the high school thing, what I learned from that is I wasn't thinking about the NBA at that time. I wasn't thinking about college, really. I was thinking about making it through that segment. And there's a certain mindset of, you know, when you're going through condition, you're going through something hard, it's really stay in that moment um, and don't get too high or low. So part of that was my personality, but I learned kind of that developed that mindset of stay right here, keep pushing through, and then worry about the next thing when the next thing comes. So in college, it was more um, Again, how can I be the hardest worker? Um, how can I, you know, not try to put myself in too much, you know, uncompromising positions? Because think about it, when you're 18, 19, you're a freshman and, you know, people are giving you a lot of attention. Um, it's a battle, right? It's a battle to say, all right, you know, thinking through things, you know, self-control, you know what I mean? Like, it's so that's the, that was for me, it was just trying to have the discipline um, to live, live the right kind of life so that you don't put yourself in, in bad situations. So, yeah, essentially what you're saying is everything from that time period and kind of expanding to a bigger role is everything comes down to decisions, yeah. you know, like key decisions and making yeah. the smart and right choices. Yeah, because you're right, because my father was the was. You know, he was the first black head coach and he was he we had a lot on the line. You know, he had a reputation. I had, you know, I'm coming in as a son and, you know, I wanted to uphold that name and that reputation. Um, you know, I had expectations of myself. And so that whole thing going back to losing yourself for something bigger was always in the back of my mind. 
you know, it really wasn't just about, you know, can I be all conference of this or that? It was really, I need to make sure I'm upholding my end <laughs> of the bargain. And, and really like, you know, a lot of times when I think about your purpose, like in your walk with God, right? Your, your, your step and your path and your journey and your relationship with God. A lot of times I think, okay, you know, here are, the Bible says a human heart plans its course, but, but um, the Lord directs and orders our steps. So when I think about that, the sacrifice and that is, I just don't want to mess it up because it's written. Yeah. Like it's written, it's already put out there, it's ordained. Um, I don't know, you know, how every day's gonna play out, but I pretty much know that he's got me. I just don't want to mess it up. And I think being a coach's son has helped me with that that mindset, is because I know a lot of the thought process that goes into what what the coach is thinking, the preparation part. So my thing is, well. Just do your part, play it, do your job, but just, you know, I don't, I don't want to mess it up. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that for real, because again, especially at that time period of your life and for, you know, the young adults out there, you know, that kind of age range, there are a lot of key decisions that we have to make because I'm only 24 myself, mm -hmm. but that time period is so key to making the right decisions to set yourself up truly for a yeah. better future. And you don't realize what the, see, when you're younger, you don't think about consequences as much. It's just the way I, how, how our brain and, and body are wired, you know, in our low, you know, in our teens and low twenties, we just, our, our brains aren't even developed like that yet. So it's important when you're young to really develop these principles and fundamentals and, and mindset and these values um, that you stick with you, that, that you, because it helps guide your, like you said, your decisions. Now decisions can, <laughs> decision, one decision, you know, could could it, it could be all over the, the internet for the rest of your life, you know, once yeah. one like split decision. So it's really like, how do you enjoy life and live life, but be present and thinking about be mindful of that consequence at the same time? Discipline. Yeah. No, that's real. That's that's so real. That I'm not like I said. I love that because that perspective is so huge. And then transitioning into the NBA when you're when you're fully grown, you're where you want to be. You know, you've got success in the league. Where was the sacrifice? What was the mindset there? Uh, same, really. I mean, I think as you know, when you're when you have a gift and a talent, and everybody does, by the way, right? Everybody has something special and unique to offer the world. It's just that, you know, some, some because of our culture are recognized and glorified more by the world. So I don't think the mindset and the, the decisions and everything changed. It's just, it got amplified and, and heightened the further you go. I still had to think about people I'm with. I had to think about decisions I made. You had to think about you know, certain moments of your life. Now you're a professional. You're really a CEO. So now it's who do you have in your circle? Now that you have the, you have money you have financial decisions, um, you know, you have high level coaches who can train you. You got people trying to give you advice, people in your ear. You got so many things now that you have to like this like coming into your, into your universe, into your world, into your being. And how do you negotiate and, and, and navigate all that? Um, that's why it takes even more discipline, self-control, you know, surrendering to something bigger than yourself. So all these things are still coming. It's just that you got to build up that, uh, that system inside you to, to keep you, um, to, to regulate you right along the right path. And, um, so yeah, it was okay. Now when you're going out, you can afford to do a lot more than you could do when you're in college. You got to take discipline, right? So you can save it. Um, you can get to anybody, hang out with anybody you want, but is that always going to be the right person? You know, you can, 
So there are a lot of things you can do, like the Bible even says, it's every, all things are permiss- permissible, but not all things are beneficial. So where's the discipline? Where are the things that can help you uh, get to your end goal? So people talk about winning. You ask any athlete, yeah, we talk, we, we have discussed this pretty much on every talk, right? Everybody wants to win. But one thing I've heard recently that I like is because of the world when the world we're in, social media, um, access to information, access to all these different perspectives and insights and all this, people become saying, well, I want it this way. So now if you ask a person if they want to win, yeah, they'll say that. But do they win on win? Do they want to win on their terms or on the most advantageous terms of the team and the organization? You know, and that's 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 a mouthful there. But every word, you know, is, is real. Like you said, I love what you said about being a CEO, because at the end of the day, we're all in control of what we need to do from the ambition from the discipline, from the decision making, self control, all of that is just a big package that turns comes right back to the yeah. CEO. And that's you. Ultimately, what do you want to do? What are you going to sacrifice? Where do you want to go? It's so many questions and so many decisions that can be made. But at the end of the day, you're the yeah. CEO. I, I love that. Part it's a. I, I think of as I'm kind of summing this up. I think sacrifice is a determination of the will. We, God has given us a will. That's our soul. That's our being. He's given us choices to make, decisions that we can make. Like that, we're not robots. So He gives us that. That's out of His love. He's given us the capacity to make decisions. He's given us the capacity to determine a will. We have a will. So to me, like the sacrifice is what are you willing? to do like you're only willing to do so much so it comes down to what is that and if you just think back every day where do i want to go what am i willing to do to get there and is that in line with my purpose i think yeah that's a powerful (laughs) final thought right there like that's that's powerful and you know just I'll even say this, you know, to add into it, like I, I kind of repeat it, but I guess my final thought would kind of be, you know, about being mm. the CEO. Like I, that's that's probably going to stay with right. me for a while because I didn't even think about that for yeah. a long time because as a CEO, you are a top dog. You're the top dog of your life. Make these key decisions. Continue to be smart. Continue to be disciplined because sacrifice, there's no one yeah. true word for it. It's a yeah. combination, like you said, of being willing to do the things yeah. you need to do. I don't think I could have closed with any better statement and you did too. I I, I will say just kind of like something that we should hit on for next time, which, which leads into that. So as a CEO, one thing I found in terms of like just having a brand, having a company, having a vision, uh, having a family, there's so many decisions that you have to make according to certain information, according to certain, certain facts. But facts and information don't mean wisdom, right? So if you want that intuition, that higher level of intuition, you know, some people say, man, I just read something. There's a vibe. There's something about that person or this situation that's sitting in my gut that you use wisdom from experience in just certain situations, but that's why it's important to have discipline, but to have all these fundamentals and values and spiritual insight because God will give you insight into a certain situation, a relationship, how you should handle something and what is going to happen in the future. So, you need that if you're going to be in this situation of influence and of management and leadership. I say leadership, that's literally what you were saying. And like you always tell me, like you always 
said, when you're inside of that divine, divine assignment, it's nothing, like you said, God will give you these signs. He'll give you these things that you're in the right place at the right time and you're heading in the yeah. right direction. And like I said, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you guys as always for tuning in. And remember that the fundamentals are the foundation for your successes.